Chapter 6, Circuit Breakers. Circuit breakers are designed to interrupt the flow of current uh, in a circuit and to isolate a portion or help to isolate a portion of that circuit. The design of the circuit breakers over the century has changed dramatically from when it was first conceived to where it is today. And there are many, many types out there using various methods, both mechanical and electrical, to uh, interrupt current flow in a safe manner. We're going to go through uh, a few of the uh, major circuit breaker types that are out there. And again, a lot will depend on the interrupting capacity that is required, the speed with which you need to operate uh, the circuit breaker, and the voltage level as to which uh, or where the circuit is. Most of the high capacity, high voltage breakers that are out there today can be divided into one of four categories. They are either oil breakers, air blast breakers, vacuum breakers, or SF6 breakers. One of the oldest type breakers that are out there today, uh, and still in service today, are the bulk oil breakers. And this is how they work. When the uh, electric current carrying contacts in the oil are separated, an arc is established in between the separated contacts. This arc will produce rapidly growing gas bubbles or bubbles around the arc. As the moving contacts move away from the fixed contact, the length of the arc is increased and as a result, the resistance of the arc is increased. The increased resistance causes lowering of the temperature and hence reducing the formation of gases around the arc. The arc quenching in bulk oil circuit breakers takes place within electric current passing through the zero crossing. As the gas bubble is enclosed by oil inside a totally airtight vessel, the oil surrounding it will apply high pressure on the bubble which results in highly compressed gas around the arc. As the pressure is increased, the deionization of gas increases which helps the arc in quenching. The cooling effect of hydrogen gas also helps the arc quenching in oil circuit breakers. In a minimum oil circuit breaker when opening, the ionized gas around the arc sweeps away through upper vents and cold oil enters into the arcing chamber through the lower vents in an axial direction. As soon as the moving contact tip crosses the lower vent opening, a final arc quenching occurs. The cold oil occupies the gap between the fixed contact and the moving contact and the minimum oil circuit breaker finally comes into an open position. The axial venting generates high gas pressure and hence has high dielectric strength. So it is mainly used for interrupting low electric current at high voltages. On the other hand, radial venting minimum oil circuit breakers produce relatively low gas pressure and hence low dielectric strength. So it can be used for low voltage and high electric current interruption. Many times the combination of both is used in minimum oil circuit breakers so that the chamber is equally efficient to interrupt low electric currents as well as high electric currents. These type of circuit breakers are available up to 8000 MVA at 245 kV. Air blast breakers are, as their name suggests, just blasting away the arc produced by opening the contacts with air and this compressed air blasting across the contact contacts and venting into the atmosphere creates a very loud report or a loud bang which uh, can be a nuisance to residential areas 
So most times these breakers, and because of the nature of the high voltage equipment involved with it, are usually removed from the general public. However, there are three different categories of air blast breakers. There's axial blast air circuit breakers. There's axial blast with side moving contacts and cross blast uh, air circuit breakers. These type of air circuit breakers were used for the system voltages of 245 kV, 420 kV or higher, especially where faster breaker operations is required. In axial blast circuit breakers, the moving contact is in contact with a fixed contact with the help of a spring pressure as shown in this slide. There is a nozzle orifice in the fixed contact which is blocked by the tip of the moving contact at, at when it is normally closed or in the closed position. When a trip occurs, the high pressure air is introduced into the arcing chamber. The air pressure will counter the spring pressure and deform the spring, hence the moving contact is withdrawn from the fixed contact and the nozzle hole becomes open. At the same time, the high pressure air starts flowing along the arc through the fixed contact nozzle orifice. This axial flow of air along the arc through the nozzle orifice will make the arc lengthen and cool. Hence, arc voltages become much higher than system voltages. That means system voltage is insufficient to sustain the arc. Consequently, the arc is quenched. In this type of axial blast air circuit breaker, the moving contact is fitted over a piston supported over a spring. In order to open the circuit breaker, the air is admitted into the arcing chamber when pressure reaches to a predetermined value. It presses down on the moving contact and an arc is drawn between the fixed and moving contacts. The air blast immediately transfers the arc to the arcing electrodes and is consequently quenched by the axial, axial flow of the air. The working principle of cross blast air circuit breakers is quite simple. In this system, the blast pipe is fixed perpendicular to the moving contact in the arcing chamber and on the opposite side of the arcing chamber, which is also fitted with an exhaust chamber so that the air coming from the blast pipe can enter into the exhaust chamber through the contact gap of the breaker. The exhaust chamber is fitted with arc splitters. When the moving contact is withdrawn from the fixed contact, an arc is established in between the contacts. And at the same time, high pressure air coming from the blast, the blast pipe, will pass through the contact gap and will forcibly take the arc into the exhaust chamber where the arc is split with the help of the splitters and ultimately quenched. The material used for the current carrying contacts plays an important role in the performance of vacuum circuit breakers. Copper chromium is the most ideal material to make vacuum circuit breaker contacts. Vacuum interrupter technology was first introduced in and about 1960 but it is still a developing technology even today. As time goes on, the size of the vacuum interrupter is being reduced from its early 1960 size due to different techniques and developments in the field of engineering. The contact geometry is also improving with time. From butt contacts of the early days, it is gradually changing to spiral shape cup-shaped and axial magnetic field contacts. The vacuum circuit breaker today is recognized as the most reliable current interrupting technology for medium voltage switchgear. 
It requires a minimum of maintenance compared to other circuit breaker technologies. The main aim of this circuit breaker is to quench the arc when the AC current cycle is at zero or zero crossing and by establishing a high dielectric strength in between the contacts so that re-establishment of the arc after the current, uh, current reaches zero, it becomes impossible. The dielectric strength of a vacuum is eight times greater than that of air and four times greater than that of SSX gas. This high dielectric strength makes it possible to quench a vacuum arc within a very small contact gap. For short contact gaps, low contact mass, and no compression of the medium around the contact, the drive energy required in a vacuum breaker is at a minimum. When two face-to-face -face contact areas are just being separated from each other, they do not separate instantly. Contact area on the contact face is being reduced and ultimately comes to a point when they are finally detached. All of this happens, of course, in a fraction of a microsecond. At this instant of detouching the contacts in a vacuum, the current through the contacts concentrate on that last contact point on the contact surface and they make it a hot spot. As it is in a vacuum, the metal on the contact surface is easily vaporized due to the hot spot and creates a conducting medium for an arc path. Then the arc will be initiated and continue until the next current zero. At current zero, this vacuum arc is extinguished and the conducting metal vapor is recondensed on the contact surface. At this point, the contacts are already separated, hence there is no question of revaporization of the contact surface for the next cycle of the current. That means the arc cannot reestablish again. In this way, Vacuum circuit breakers prevent the re-establishment of the arc by producing high dielectric strength in the contact gap after current zero. The service life of vacuum circuit breaker is much longer than any other uh, type of circuit breaker. There's no chance of a fire hazard as there is in oil circuit breakers, and it is a much more environmentally friendly breaker than one that contains SF6 gas. Replacement of the vacuum interrupter part of a circuit breaker is almost as convenient as changing a fuse in a fuse panel. Now let's uh, take a quick look at the SF6 breaker. Sulfur hexafluoride, or SF6, is an excellent gaseous dielectric for high voltage power applications. It has been used extensively in high voltage circuit breakers and other switchgears employed by the power industry. It is also used in GIS uh, uh, equipment or gas insulated power distribution substations and gas insulated transmission lines, etc. Some of its unique uh, properties that uh, make it uh, uh, good for high voltage power applications is its high dielectric strength, its unique arc quenching ability, its good thermal conductivity, and its excellent thermal stability. Some of the disadvantages of SF6 gas is, one, it is a very potent greenhouse gas and safety regulations are being introduced in many countries in order to prevent the release of this gas into the atmosphere. Water interferes with the self-healing properties and therefore it must be kept very pure and very dry. This gas also liquefies at very low temperatures below minus uh, 10 degrees Fahrenheit and the byproduct is usually aluminum tetrafluoride, which is a white powder that is acidic when combined with moisture and would add to the de degradation of any equipment that uh, comes in contact with it over a period of time. There are uh, many different configurations out there of the SF6 circuit breaker. But there are mainly three types, and it all depends on the voltage level of the application. 
For a single interrupter SF6 circuit breaker, uh, it is used for voltages up to 245 kV. The two interrupter uh, SF6 circuit breaker is applied uh, up to 420 kV and the four interrupter SF6 circuit breaker is applied up to 800 kV. We're going to look at a single interrupter puffer type in the next uh, couple of slides and uh, you'll see some of the, the, the main features of this type of a circuit breaker. The working of the SF6 circuit breaker of the first generation was quite simple. It is to some extent similar to a near blast circuit breaker. SF6 gas was compressed and stored in a high pressure reservoir. During the operation of an SF6 breaker, this highly compressed gas is released through the arc in the breaker and is collected to a relatively low pressure reservoir. Then it is pumped back into the high pressure reservoir for reuse. The working of an F SF6 circuit breaker is a little bit different in modern times. Innovation of puffer type designs make the operation of the SF6 circuit breaker much easier. In the puffer type design, the arc energy is utilized to develop pressure in the arcing chamber for arc quenching. Here is uh, a diagram of the breaker and it's filled with as it's filled with SF6 gas at rated pressure. There are two fixed contacts fitted with a specific contact gap. A sliding cylinder bridges these fixed contacts. The cylinder can actually slide upward and downward along the contacts. There is one stationary piston inside the cylinder which is fixed with another stationary part of the SF6 breaker in such a way that it cannot change its position during the movement of the cylinders. As the piston is fixed, the cylinder is movable or sliding. The internal volume of the cylinder changes when the gas cylinder slides. During operation of the breaker, the cylinder moves downwards against the fixed piston. Hence, the volume inside the cylinder is reduced, which produces compressed SF6 gas inside the cylinder. The cylinder has a number of side vents, which were blocked by the upper fixed contact body during the closed position. As the cylinder moves further downwards, these vent openings cross the upper fixed contact and become unblocked and then compressed SF6 gas inside the cylinder will come out through these vents at a high speed towards the arc and pass through the axial hole of both fixed contacts. The arc is quenched during this flow of F SF6 gas. During the closing of the circuit breaker, the sliding cylinder moves upward and is ready for the next operation. This ends chapter six.